We're going to continue now with Bible 101. This is number six, and it will be in the seminary folder. Now, where we left off last time, we were getting into the section, which was actually a larger section. Um, and when we begin here, where we're going to check in, what, what this section is, is called Keep Helping the Bible to Come to Life. Now, that's where we begin. Now, what we say here is that an outline of the Bible is a good place to start. It is the orientation. But what is all of this saying? The Bible, as you saw, how many books, and in these books are also many styles of writing depicting their difficult ways of knowing the truth. The Bible, in the Western sacred text, holding the truth in many forms, it should be viewed as a whole book. This means seeing how all they fit together. This means first that the Old and the New Testament have a connection. While this means that the diverse books of each testament are speaking the word of truth in different languages. Now, here's the question. What are the languages? And what is the truth? That's what we're going to be dealing with now, be get more detailed. Now we're going back to the historical books, which we, which we talked about before, and I say here, even though we began with Genesis, which is usually part of the collection called the historical books, and known in the Jewish tradition as the Torah, Genesis is to a large extent, and all the others, uh, in the same. extent contains material that is not limited to the historical interpretation. Here is a quote from Maurice Nicole expressing another dimension from these books. Now, uh, don't forget Maurice Nicole was a student of uh, Ospensky, who was a student of George Ivanovich Gurdjieff. So, Nicole writes, everything, everything said in the first five books of the Old Testament, called the Pentateuch or Torah, has an external literal meaning and an internal esoteric or psychological meaning. These books were written not as a literal historical, but as to convey another meaning. Just as in the case of the parables, historical incidents were used and adopted in such a way that esoteric or inner meaning could be conveyed by what apparently happened in a historical sense. So you see what Nicole is saying here. Now, in Genesis, the beginning part of the book speaks in the language of the myth and esoteric psychology. Each story may be taken not only at the level we might assume from the language, but also on a personal level. This is the challenge and the power of Genesis. It allows it to have a multi-level meaning where we are listening to cosmology, biology, psychology, religion, esoteric schools of truth, and human origins. The Garden of Eden, the story of Cain and Abel, the story of Noah and the Ark, the story of the Tower of Babel, has in immense depth and powerful meaning. These are not only old stories, but speak to each person about the human conditions we find ourselves in 
and the life we see around us. Their characters of language allow them to be both about schools of ancient humanity and each of us at the same time. They are not in the realm of time, but are archetypal, eternally true, and endlessly rich in teaching and revealing. Now, you see, in the book of Genesis, we must realize, even though it's among the historical books, what we find in it is not limited at all to historical books. So we will get into a little of this Genesis, and I have to stop at a certain time limit here, but I will begin. Later in Genesis, we move to another language, history. This began with the story of Abraham, the father of the Jewish people. But immediately we see that this is not just history, this mythological ancestor of the Jewish people is an historical figure who enters the Bible only because he has been called by God. From this point, we find the beginning of the special kind of history where what appears to be records of historical events in the lives of individuals and groups are uh, training patterns in time, history of events taking place on the level between God and people. This is referred to by German words, Heilsgeschichte, sacred history. Heilsgeschichte, sacred history. History that is also mystery. Not only the obvious history that appears, but interpretation of that history. We will continue this shortly.